Welcome back everybody to our intermediate and advanced civil 3D tutorials. We're going to continue on with our dynamic blocks. We're going to apply two different uh, dynamic block properties to this next one. We're going to provide a rotation and we're also going to provide a stretch. So we're going to make it longer, we're going to make it shorter, we're also going to allow it to rotate. Again I have a simple, I have a, a piece of line here uh, with some hatch and I've drawn basically a groundwater flow uh, contour arrow. So I'm going to again go into the blocks, we're going to name it groundwater arrow. My base point I want to be at the tip of the arrow. I'm going to select my objects and leave everything else the same. This one annotative, it's usually in model space and we'll hit OK. Again, we load into block editor because I've chosen that option. Now there's two parameters I would like to add to this. I would like to add a rotation and I would also like to add a stretch. So we're going to start with the rotation and I want it to rotate based on the zero point on my block and I'm going to stretch it off to the right a little bit and again an angle of zero. Just start me off at zero and I'll rotate it from there. Under the actions command which I don't think I want to go into yet. I want to add a, I believe it is a polar stretch to my block or to my arrow here. I'm going to place that at the midpoint, the end of the arrow, and I want it to stretch my entire arrow. So I want to apply a distance stretch as well. Now I'm going to come into the actions and I'm going to apply my rotate. I'm going to select the angle. I'm going to select my objects and we might have to come in and out of this block a few times to look at the stretch and the rotation to make sure everything is happening that we want it to happen. Now if you've noticed I've also selected this arrow parameter because when I rotate this block I want this distance parameter to go with it. I'm going to go under the polar stretch and I'm going to select my parameter, so my distance. The parameter point to associate with the action, I want this one here. And I want to stretch these pieces. Now this is a selection set window like other items within Civil 3D. I'm just going to stretch the back left half. Once that's done, I'm going to hit enter. And as we see here, both of these parameters are now have commands associated with them. So I'm going to click close, close block editor. And again, you're going to have to come in and out of the block editor window a few times to make sure that these are all set up and work correctly. And as we see, my stretch did not work. I might've selected the wrong one. However, when I click the rotate button, this one functions the way that we would expect it to. So it'll rotate the arrow around it also grabs that stretched that stretch grip. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go back into block editor. I also want to caution you there's block editor and there's edit block in place. This edit block in place, unless Autodesk has fixed this, will destroy the dynamic pieces of your block. It will it gives you kind of like the xref edit in place window. It's going to allow you to edit it in your current window here without going into block editor. From my experience, it does destroy dynamic blocks. And let's try it on the north arrow. So if I go edit block in place. And let me show you this window. This It has a reference edit. It says the block referencer contains custom block properties. It will break those. So if we go in OK. I can edit my block, I can close and save, so save changes. And if we click on the north arrow, there is no longer that rotation applied to it. So be very, very, very careful. You want to go into block editor, not edit block in place. I'm going to delete that distance parameter. All right, I'm back, I figured out what I did wrong. I was applying a polar stretch instead of uh, just a linear stretch. Because we are rotating the north arrow with this angle button, 
we can apply a polar stretch because it's going to rotate that grip as well. Or sorry, a linear stretch. So I'm going to select linear instead. And I'm going to specify from here, I want just the back end of the arrow to stretch. So this will be my distance stretch and we are given that, that blue colored grip. So this is what is going to stretch. Under the actions, I'm going to select stretch. I'm going to select my parameter and I can stretch it based on this end or this end. However, if we, if we look when I move my mouse back and forth, red, blue, or sorry, red and red. So I want to stretch this parameter and I want to stretch those and then I have to select my objects selecting that. Once I hit enter, that stretch parameters now included. However, because we ended up deleting the other parameter, this tri uh, triangular grip, let's see if it's, if it rotates when we go to select this. So now we can see that this will make my arrow either longer or shorter. And if I rotate it, as I had thought, the arrow stays in place because we have not told that arrow to be part of this. So I'm going to reset that back to a rotation of zero and I might have to do it through properties. Angle of 90. Okay, uh, we're just going to ignore that for now. Uh, I'm going to go back into block editor. And as I said in a previous vin, uh, video, we can right click, go action, selection set and modify. So I want to add all of this to that new selection set and hit enter. We'll close and save. And there tends to be some display related bugs and even that rotation might have been a display related bug when we're stretching hatch and lines at the same time. But now when I rotate this, that arrow is going to go with it. And we can make that shorter or longer. So that was a video on the rotation and the stretch dynamic blocks. The other commands with the dynamic blocks, there's move and, and flip and whatnot. They all function the same. You have to add the parameter, you have to add the action in and just specify what you want to have happen. The next video, I'm gonna show you some more advanced dynamic blocks, ones that I've made. We're not gonna go through the steps to make them, but I'm gonna show you the options that are available and just how many parameters that we can include.